How do we stop knowledge loss, do you think, and a gap in the next generation where entry level jobs are quickly getting replaced by AI, like you said, like contracts and things like that, like simple jobs? Yeah, so it depends on your economic model. And the, the problem here is if you're under regular capitalism of winner takes all, um, you, you, there's no way not to have a dystopian outcome. You know, this is what the West people have looked at. They also call it the fourth industrial revolution. And if you read all their papers, what good old Klaus Eat Your Grasshopper Schwab is saying to people is, is that, you know, we are, are in charge now and we're just going to decide how to allocate all the resources for humanity. But don't worry, we'll have these enlightened AIs to kind of help us out. But you don't get to have any say in the matter, and uh, you'll own nothing, but we'll make sure you're happy. That's their view of humanity. That's pretty fucked up. Now, I like Jacques Fresco or you know uh, any of these great thinkers like the Venus Project, where I think we could live in a resource-based economy, we could live in an abundance economy, and if we're better at sharing that radical abundance through different business models, governance models like co-ops or other things, then we can create a wisdom-based society instead of an intelligence-based society. Because what we've done is we've commoditized intelligence. The ability to pursue a goal and achieve that goal used to be the driving function of corporations, governments, and individuals. You go to medical school and you learn how to be the best doctor so you can do the best medicine. Well, at some point, AI will always be the best doctor, just like AI is now always the best chess player. So no longer is it the case that you can go and be really, real great and, and work real hard and one day be the best chess player. You'll be the best human chess player, but you will never beat the best computer ever again. Just not going to happen because the technology's gotten too good. But wisdom is not about how good are you at achieving goals. Wisdom is what goals do you wish to achieve? That's how we get our human agency back. Because what we can do collectively in a new economic structure is you can take a step back and say, where should the human race go over the next 100 years or 200 years or 300 years? What should we have? It's almost like the Iroquois seventh generation concept of how will this impact the seventh generation from us and then what you can do is use that tool the hyper intelligence of ai to accelerate our pursuit and accomplishment of those goals so ironically um the what's happened is we've changed from a species that's going to reward hyper specialization which leads to hyper intelligence to a species that's going to reward hyper generalization meaning that if you have more breadth, not depth, and you know more about a lot of things instead of a, li a huge amount about a little thing, um, that you are better suited to have wisdom. You also have to go and ask yourself, what builds wisdom? The human race, 5,000 years of traditions, from Zen Buddhism to Confucianism to Christianity, Islam, Judaism, all of these great faith traditions and things like Stoicism, all modern philosophy, ancient philosophy, they have left behind so many breadcrumbs of what it means to live a good life with integrity and virtue and to live a life of wisdom. And there has to be a great rediscovering by the human race of these things because in the pursuit of hyperintelligence, what we've done is we said, look, wisdom isn't compensated, so let us throw out wisdom. We don't care about that. Thus, all the wisdom traditions, we don't, we don't really give you brownie points for being a wise person. And if you don't believe me, ask yourself this. If you go to your parents 20 years ago and say, Mom, Dad, I've decided what I want to do in college. And you, let's say there's two ways you can play this conversation. You say, I want to be an aerospace engineer. They say, good for you, Johnny. That's a high-paying job. Yo, you'll get a job at Boeing. You'll be doing great, Johnny. Yeah. You go, Mom, Dad, I want to be a philosopher. And they say, oh, God, Johnny, you're going to have to become a male stripper. Whoa, this is terrible. Why, why, Johnny, would you do this to yourself? You're going to be the most educated barista at Starbucks. Why, Johnny? Meanwhile, the aerospace engineer, all that person's really doing is trying to figure out how to build one part of a super complex system, perhaps 5% better and cheaper for Boeing. And that entire pursuit could be potentially replaced with 
AI. And Johnny the philosopher is opining on the very nature of what does it mean to be human. Why should humans do anything? What is just? What is not just? All of these foundational human questions. So, and yet somehow we view that as like, well, that, that, that's not a real thing. You, you shouldn't do that. So that is the great reset of society, not, not the give Klaus, you should eat grasshopper Schwab, um, you know, more power. The great reset of society is, is basically saying perhaps Johnny the philosopher is now going to be more valuable than Johnny the aerospace engineer because we don't care about intelligence anymore. It's commoditized and it's infinitely more powerful than anything we could think of. We care about wisdom because wisdom is what goals to do and we need more philosophers this time around. So that's the advice I'd give. And they said, but how will I feed myself? Well, I don't think anybody can feed themselves with the way we're going. We have a president in the United States with a straight face addressed the nation and said, we need to give $100 billion to Israel, which has the largest natural gas field in the entire Mediterranean, Leviathan, We're going to make it one of the wealthiest countries in the world, and Ukraine. If you calculate how much that is, what he basically told the American people is that half of the entire American tax base, the bottom half, pays $133 billion in taxes every year, is working exclusively for proxy wars in Israel and Ukraine. That's literally what he just said. 100% of the money they pay in taxes will go just to what he just said, right there. Such a national priority, nothing else. How do you sustain an, a government like that that's $31 trillion of debt, 8% inflation per year? You got Janet Yellen, the gremlin, coming out and she says, Oh, uh, inflation's down. We're doing a hell of a job. Everything looks wonderful. I'm just like, whatever drugs they're sharing in this administration, they got to be so awesome if people are, are living in this reality. They're so far removed from the lived experience of everyday people in Detroit and Compton and elsewhere where fucking gas is $8 a gallon. The rent goes up every single year. I, I mean, it, you know, it, you want to keep it real. Well, I grew up on The Simpsons. It came out in 1988. The Simpsons, at the end of the day, is a show about a guy who dropped out of high school, who has a blue-collar job doing nothing at a power plant, is able to live in a house, have two cars, have three kids, and a wife who stays at home and doesn't work. And, and we somehow thought that that was just normal, everyday life, because actually it was normal, everyday life in 1988. Now you have a situation where you could have a marriage where both partners are master's degrees, working high-paying jobs, and they can't even afford fucking rent in San Francisco. And they, with a straight face, are telling us that everything's great, inflation's down, all these things. No, no, it's not. It's like they, 3%. Yeah, that's what they're telling me. Meanwhile, the same house that I saw in a neighborhood down the street just eight years ago, that was $150,000, was just put on market for $148,000. $150,000 a decade ago, $148,000 today. But, and meanwhile, in that same period of time, teachers' salaries have only gone up on average about 15 to 20% in the state of Colorado. Okay, yeah, you just tell me there's no fucking problem at all. So, you know what? I, uh, I don't give a shit anymore what they say. Be a philosopher. Focus on wisdom. Uh, the economy, it's all going to come collapsing down at some point, and the whole notion of money is going to be reinvented. And we in the cryptocurrency industry are the only people in the world having a real conversation about what that should look like and how do we make that fair. And if it is fair, when everything comes collapsing down, we're not going to listen to the goblins anymore. We're, we're just going to go our own way.